Every year, tens of thousands of West Africans migrate to Europe, desperate to escape from dreadful poverty. But as People and Power has discovered, many are also exploited by mafia gangs. In the second of two special reports, our investigation moves to Nigeria, from where women are being trafficked to work in the sex trade. Bound by ritual to pay back massive debts, they end up trapped in a nightmare world of prostitution and organized crime. to get the skill in the eyes, but it's not easy. Gloria Irobaga was trafficked to work as a prostitute in Europe. Two years ago, when the Italian authorities deported her, she returned to her hometown, Benin City, in Nigeria. With the help of an NGO, she has now managed to set up a small shop. Her journey to Europe had begun full of promises. A you know, family friend she came to meet my parents. They said that they need home, the girl. And my parents have a lot of children, so they just want them to help my parents. I take him into abroad. They said my dad shouldn't worry that when I get there, he better put me in school, continue my education, I went to the university. I'll get a good job. And I said, okay. But the reality turned out to be very different. The Benin Kingdom is known across the world as one of the most ancient and revered monarchies in Africa. But more recently, it's been making headlines for altogether different reasons. It's become the center for the trafficking of girls destined for the sex trade in Europe. So I came to Italy, I met the mother they are taking me to. He's only the one that his parents came to meet my family. I said, I'm going to pay her 35,000 US dollar. I said, okay, what am I going to do to get you that 35,000 US dollar? So there's no other job here except prostitution. Oh my God. Once Gloria arrived in Italy, the traffickers forced her to pay off this debt by working on the streets. Well, I was so scared. As a mafia, we just be going with gone in the streets, looking for who they are going to kill and collect their money and their blood. They kill them all, we just caught them, put them in a, in a waste bin, just like that. She's just like slave. She's just like slave, that's done. Gloria's story is not an isolated one. According to UN estimates, nearly 10,000 Nigerian girls are working as prostitutes in Italy alone. Trafficking of people has become the world's third largest crime, earning billions of dollars. For the second part of our investigation, we've come to Benin City in Edo State, where the majority of Nigerian girls in Europe come from. We want to find out how human trafficking can take place on such a massive scale. Reminders of Benin's glorious past are everywhere. And so are signs that many here are seeking to travel abroad. We have arranged to meet the Nigerian anti-trafficking force known as NAPTEP. The offices are staffed with investigators and lawyers. The head of Lega. Who can you prosecute? Anybody in the chain of trafficking are prosecuted. Uh, we have close to about 30-something cases in court, pending cases, presently. Others are still coming. The suspected human trafficker. A recent NAPTIP case that made headlines followed the arrest of a female agent accused of assisting international traffickers in smuggling six girls out of Nigeria. The agent came to the attention of the immigration authorities when she made a bulk application for new passports. The girls have since been reunited with their families and are helping NAPTIP prosecutors build a case. NAPTIP have arranged for us to meet one of them. For her safety, we need to protect the girl's identity. She claims to be 21, but she looks much younger. Yeah, you see that he's taking us to Greece, and his brother in Greece to give us a job. And what was the job they were promising you? Like, I don't really know the job, but say he'll give us a job, that's what he told us. And do you think your parents would have let you go to Europe if you wanted to? No. My mom was not aware. Because I said my mom was aware, she would not allow me because I'm in school. Did you ever think that they might want to take you to Greece for prostitution? No. 
The case investigator says most trafficking operations are set up in the same way. They have what we call agents. They have others known as trolleys, and then the madams, agents that recruit. They are closer to the trafficked victims. They know their houses, they know their parents, they know their history, and they know the language to use in, in deceiving them. Only for you to take this child away and share them for sexual exploitation, for child labor, or child abuse. Charged with attempted trafficking, the agent who applied for the passports on the girl's behalf is awaiting trial in a detention cell. Unusually, Naptip give us permission to talk to her as long as we hide her face. Why are they investigating you? What's your understanding? I don't have anything to say. You people have already got me. I will never try it again. This is my first time. But you were trying to get passports for the girls at immigration? Yes. How did you come to meet the girls? You know their relatives, the relatives of the girls? The girls. Yes. Yes. You know the families of the girls? Yes, I know the family. So it was a personal connection. Was all of this for money? Yes. Please, I'm tired. I, I said I will never try it again. Thank you. Do you believe her when she says she is a first timer? I don't. It's a big lie. Since we spoke to her, the agent has pleaded guilty and is now serving a prison sentence. Edo is a poor state, and a third of its people live on less than a dollar a day. It is the flow of money back from Europe into Benin that is enticing others to leave too. A staggering amount of money is being sent back by the sex workers and their madams in Europe, and for obvious reasons, it's hard to obtain exact figures. But according to a World Bank report, Benin City has the highest concentration of property development in Nigeria, financed by remittances that originate mainly in Italy. To show us how the majority of people live, Gloria has invited us back to her village on the outskirts of Benin City. The roads are bad, we can barely get through. When we arrive in the village, Gloria shows us around. There's no electricity, no running water. Does the government give anything? Last year, he provided money for the, the chairman in this organization just to make, the, make sure the road is OK, mm. or the, the person eat up the money. He didn't share. He didn't do it. He didn't tie the road, he eat up the money. He's not to provide money for this road. And you know what? That's why our car yeah. is stuck, huh? Is this the road that the chairman was meant to make better? Yeah, the road is bad. It's difficult to come down to this place to carry people from here to the market. It's difficult. And then we meet Gloria's family. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this, uh, this is my father. OK. This is my mom. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. in your village, what do they think about Europe? Life go good. Money, money go go. No ticking again. Yeah? Happiness go to come. So when somebody came to said they will take your daughter to study abroad, you must have thought that was a very good idea. I'll be happy. I know. They said they won't take her go there. We don't know whether I work with they go do. Yes, the mother with your father, he, he go agree. He, go he not go agree. Ah, the mother with your uh, father, uh, he uh, go declare for his father. Yes, they are bad people. They are bad people. They are bad people. bad people. We have to go. Gloria says one of the main problems is lack of education. She takes me to her old school, an hour and a half walk from her village. This is a classroom? Yeah. You were once in the classroom? Yes, this is a classroom. too. This is where the boys are staying? Yeah. They wow. enjoy the holiday. They go back to their parents. Let's have a quick look inside. That's... Wow. It's bad. Oh, it's bad. How it's many of you there. stay here? Yeah, I'm up to 50. Up to 15 stay here. Yeah. It's bad that we are here, you staying. She so see that bed, yeah. Do you have to pay to go to this school? Yeah, mm -hmm. pay a lot of money. Okay. Not it goes free in this, in this country we have. Okay. <laughs> Not it goes free. 
The school that we're seeing is not an isolated incident. The corrosive effect of corruption on Nigeria's education system has frequently been criticized by NGOs. They are not even encourage the students. You see when most of them, the girls, mm. like traveling out of this country. Yeah, she, no, I imagine, understand Imagine this. the condition of this place now. You see? Fueled by lack of education and poor conditions, the trafficking of girls out of Benin continues, though NAPTEP's efforts have driven it underground. To find out just how easy it is to get in touch with traffickers, we've asked a Nigerian contact to come to Benin to go undercover on our behalf. Equipped with a hidden camera and claiming he wants to traffic his sister, he manages to find an agent willing to help within a day. That woman, they go, they come out of the outside of the house. Okay, yeah. 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 So this business, you know, you know, it's on the program for So now this one, now you learn from the food. I should get a good shape. Yeah, yeah don't, don't worry. Like. Don't worry. Okay. Now we will we, we get inside, and we don't pay for the game. So I want to see the first of the money. Okay. Yeah. How does that one, we get this money? Because why? Yeah. Yeah. They don't stay for the streets. They don't know what to do. You know, just be like, somebody will be saying, mommy's pet. We have heard that traffickers use a powerful juju oath. It stops the girls from escaping, and we have asked our contact to inquire about this specifically. Because we just say he still gets some kind of spiritual things who will do. Check his style. His style is not good. We know me with the years. Many sports are not going to carry this thing. As I go there, I feel so. Before girls get sent to Europe, traffickers take them to a juju priest at one of the traditional religious shrines. He collects some of her blood, pubic hair and fingernails and makes her swear an oath which binds her to the traffickers. I was scared. That was the reason why I could not make attempt to escape from her. It was because of the oath? Yeah. You didn't run? Yeah. What did you think would happen if you would have tried to escape? I am afraid that I would have died. I would have died. This is footage filmed by a NAPTEP cameraman. It actually shows a juju priest removing an oath, which he had placed on a girl on behalf of traffickers, an illegal act under local law. The priest is undoing the oath on NAPTIP's orders. For investigators to bring a case to trial, they need the girls in the witness stand, so they must convince them that the oath has lost its power to kill. To curb the exodus of girls from Benin to Europe, NGOs have started running awareness programs in schools and villages. We have joined a group of former prostitutes who have come to Igwo Vivo village. Families often consent to their girls being trafficked to Europe, even if they know it's for prostitution, because they need the money. But it may be too late. There are few young faces in the crowd. Who here has relatives? who have left, who've gone abroad to Europe. <laughs> and then we make a surprising acquaintance. Right after the awareness training, we got talking to the local juju man, and he told us that he has been involved with taking the oath that takes the girls abroad, and he's also told us that we can come back and talk to him. We return to meet Usaboyen, the juju priest. He tells us he learned the juju tradition from his father. Are there many people in this village who have come to you to send their girls abroad? Yes. How many? Mm. Over 100 plus now. I did work for Spain, Canada, US, Belgium, Italy, Spain. He agrees to let us film his shrine.
Give me a left. Let me try to open my door. Is this where the girls come for swearing? Yes. They come here? Yes. One more person is 40,000. 40, when there is somebody who wants another person to die, does it ever make you feel bad? <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's my job. I cannot fear about that. It's my own job. The impact of globalization has made life in Nigeria uncertain. As a result, religion is on the rise. Not just traditional beliefs, there's been a huge increase in Christianity too. The striking thing about Benin City is that its streets are lined with churches of all denominations. And what we've discovered with the help of our local investigator is that some of them have begun to cash in on trafficking too. Following a tip-off, he has made contact with Prophet Emmanuel Popula at the St. Emmanuel Redemption Church, pretending he needs a spiritual bond to traffic a girl. But in the town, it is uh, the police or the person, the person directed. No, no, no. We are not police. <laughs> so, you know, I the only go cost 7,300. Then, when we start, everything will go smoothly. Because when you read there, no go to take the four to pay back to the to pay back to the people who have about the token. Since we didn't want to bring a girl, the prophet agrees to perform a ritual in her absence. If you not pay finish, you might not go settle until you pay finish. Go see. He has a variety of charms, but the most powerful one is an egg. So far you take that egg. Anybody won't go. The name is the court to the time. Okay, okay. We'll go to pray for that egg. Before we go put that down. Anybody who call the name put, now you send message, now you need profit for your hand. We go bring your own. The God don't balance. That's how the dead don't balance us. The UN estimates that traffickers earn around 150 million US dollars per year, smuggling people between Africa and Europe. And in Benin, churches on the margins are looking for a cut. We have heard from NAPTIP that traffickers in other Nigerian states have found new ways of making money from women's desperation. And we decide to travel to Abia, which is becoming known for the illegal sale of babies. Here too, Nigerian law enforcement officers have had a recent success. This police footage shows pregnant young women rescued by officers in a raid on a so-called baby factory. Investigators say the girls were held by a criminal network under Dr. Hyacinth Orikara with the goal of selling their babies to the highest bidder. The Abia State Police have agreed to take us to the building. Dr. Orikara claims this residential home was a shelter for girls with unwanted pregnancies. But the investigators allege that from the start, this was a cynical ploy allowing him to cash in on the girl's misfortune. And the bars mean they couldn't get out, they could not escape. The traffickers were charging the girls for their stay in this house, claiming the debt could only be settled with the sale of their baby. This place is not conducive to say this is a labor room for a pregnant woman. So you found a total of 32 women? 32. And any babies? Two babies. Maybe those ones have not yet been sold. When you give birth, then you will not even be allowed to see your Baby. child. It's only him that will come back to tell you that you gave birth to a male child. And then you have 30,000. But where it is female, eh, 25,000. With babies being sold for almost 6,000 US dollars, this means a 300% profit for the traffickers. Don't be surprised. If you open here, it might be a child. It might, be, it might be a child. Well, you In know, the bag? Been burning and threw away. Anyhow. 
happened eventually in the course of the deliverance child birth and one died they have no value for human being the prosecution of the traffickers has been handed over to NAPTIP's regional office in Enugu. Director Ijeoma Okoronkwo says her office is currently investigating nearly 40 different cases, the majority trafficking of babies. She takes us to meet some of the young women who have fallen victim to traffickers. Happiness, how are you? Many of the girls were led to sell their babies by family members. For some people who have gone through this, if care is not taken, they are destroyed for life. Mrs. Okoronkwo introduces us to a girl whose boyfriend is accused of selling both their babies. 28 December, I delivered a newborn baby. And this boy, called my boyfriend, carried the baby. The boyfriend claimed he gave it to an orphanage. He sold the small baby. He said that that baby is dead. The boyfriend took the older child too, but NAPTEP investigators have managed to reunite the toddler with his mother. But her baby is still missing, and her boyfriend has been arrested and charged with trafficking offences. He is brought from his prison cell for us to meet him. The boyfriend insists the baby died in the orphanage, but the investigators don't believe him. I tell them, make them better in that place. Was the baby sick before you took her there? No. You collected 250,000 Yes. For what? Yes. For, what? For that baby. According to the investigators, the orphanage was a front for traffickers. I met you, man. He said that we need to buy Pekin here. No help, we need to help. The man light up for paper and said, get one, one paper, one blank. He said, man, we will sign. Did you read the paper you signed? No, true. I didn't go to school. So you didn't know, you just signed it. Yes. You were saying poverty doesn't come into it, but he himself was saying he can't read and write, he couldn't read what he was signing. Yes, poverty is, um, is a driving force in human trafficking, you can't, you can't rule it out. But there are some crimes we commit that should not be given that embellishment of poverty. You can see this young man, who has sold his own baby. You heard him say his child was reported dead. I couldn't see any emotion. He will spend that money and he will go look for another girl to impregnate and sell off this baby. Probably it has become a way of life for him. I don't think that is poverty. Poverty shouldn't take the humanity from you. Though NAPTEP can chart some successes across Nigeria, they face an uphill battle against the traffickers and have their hands full helping former traffic victims reintegrate into society. Back in Benin, Gloria Erobaga is one of the success stories. She has asked us to come to her church to meet her pastor. To our astonishment, Pastor Barnabas tells us that he used to work with his grandfather as a juju priest. In those days, I, he called it, joined him when I was not born again to initiate people that is traveling abroad to put them into oath. Ah, I can't lie, I did it. That was years ago when I have not known the Lord. Today, Pastor Barnabas uses his past knowledge to deliver people who are possessed by evil. This is how he managed to overcome Gloria's fear of her trafficking oath. With huge profits for criminals, widespread poverty in Nigeria, and willing buyers in a globalizing world, the trade in people shows little sign of abating. But some girls have managed to break free, and it is their courage to speak out that's proving the most powerful tool in the fight against the traffickers.